Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year! I hope you are doing well. And today we're gonna talk about a brand focus again. And this is a brand that I liked a lot, especially recently. I am obsessed with their bags. So which brand am I gonna talk about today? The brand is YSL. So why don't you grab a cup of coffee? I have mine right over here and let's get started. As usual, I'm going to talk about the history first and I am going to talk about my top three bag recommendations. And I think there's going to be a lot of butchering in terms of the pronunciation of people's names here because it's all French, but I will try my best. Okay, so now let's talk about YSL's history. YSL is rather a younger brand compared to a lot of other luxury house. It was funded in 1962. And it was funded by, of course, Mr. Yves Saint Laurent and his partner, Perrier Beguet. So when they just founded the company, the brand in 1962, the brand specialized in Hewitt Couture, ready to wear, leather accessories and footwear. And as everyone knows, there is a YSL Beauty which focuses on like cosmetics and skincare, but that is owned by L'Oreal these days. Okay, so we're just gonna focus on talking about the luxury fashion house of YSL. Let's move on to the next important timeline of YSL. In 1966, YSL debuted La Smoking. So I think some of you might heard about this type of clothes. Um, it's a tuxedo suit for women. And this is an attempt to sort of democratize women. And I think it's um, it's a very revolutionary move, especially if you put it into the context of 1966. And until today, um, in some of the awards and um, Met Gala, they still chose this type of clothes as the main theme for the celebrities to wear. So this is, I think, probably the first big milestone of YSL. So after 1966, um, the brand expanded in 1980s and early 1990s as well. So they have men's and women's fragrances and cosmetic lines started in 1978. However, in 1992, the company's profit were in decline and um, its share price had fallen. So after 1992, in 1993, Saint Laurent um, was sold to a pharmaceutical company called Sanofi or Sanofi. And some of you may wonder, oh, but now Kering owns the brand, right? So that's correct. In 1999, Kering purchased YSL from Sanofi and they also hired the famous Tom Ford to be the designer for the ready to wear collection. And time move on to the 21st century. So in 2002, Mr. Yves Saint Laurent himself has suffered from years of poor health, drug abuse, depression, alcoholism, and criticism of the YSL designer. He closed the couture division of YSL. And very sadly, he died of brain cancer in 2008. And for that few years, it has been very difficult for YSL because there are so many YSL stores closing in the key US markets, for example, San Francisco and New York, including the Madison Avenue location, which is the first ever store they had in New York. So that's not some good years of YSL. And then we we'll move on to 2012. So that year, a very important person was hired by Kering to be the creative director of YSL and he is A.D. Sliman, which is also currently the creative director of Celine. And I think when he was around, he designed the very famous Sac de Jour handbag of YSL, which is still very famous, very popular these days. And in 2016, he left Saint Laurent. Then Anthony Vaccarillo was appointed as the creative director and he still holds this position until today. So I think after A.D. Sliman became the creative director of YSL, it really revived the company, revived the brand. Nowadays, 
YSL is actually the second largest fashion house under Kirin. The largest one is Gucci. And for the past few years, especially during the pandemic, according to the finance reports from Kirin, Saint Laurent is garnering a lot of attention from Kirin management. They mentioned that Saint Laurent is going to be the next house to join the realm of the mega brands, particularly as its growth potential is highly underestimated, including in China. So in short, the brand is on an exceptional growth path. And I guess you can also tell from the recent price increase of YSL's handbags, it's been crazy. So speaking of handbags, let's move on to the handbags recommendation for YSL. And I myself have been eyeing these bags for a very long time. And as you know, bonus is about to be out very soon. So I may have an unboxing for you guys in the recent weeks. So what are my top three handbags recommendation from YSL? The first one is my favorite, Manhattan. So I think it is a very good looking office bag. It's very structured and YSL bag is just in generally speaking very suitable for black color, which is a perfect color for the office. And you know, the interesting thing about this bag is that you somehow can still pair it with your casual clothes. For example, a t-shirt, a jeans, or you know, some wear it with a jacket, wear it with a, I don't know, a jeans jacket. It still looks pretty chic. So this bag is super versatile. It's great for office environment, but it's also great if you want to wear it with your casually. And it's very simple design and super low key. There is literally no logo on this bag. I mean, there is a very small YSL logo, but it's very minimal. And as you guys know, I am a diehard fan of low profile luxury. So yeah, it comes with two sizes. One is a small size and one is a regular size. So this retail price for small size is Hong Kong dollar 22,500 or US dollar 2,800. And this used to be the price for the regular size Manhattan bag after the price increase. And it's just crazy. I don't know how much they, I think at least 20% price increase for this bag last year. And the regular size, the price is now at Hong Kong dollar 26,500 or US dollar 3,300. Yeah, not cheap, not a cheap bag at all. All right, so the second recommendation I have for you guys is Nikki bag. I felt um, Nikki bag really represents the ultimate YSL character, which is very carefree, very gender neutral. It's not feminine at all. It's but it's not, it's not feminine, but it's also not masculine. It's just very gender neutral and very handsome. It's a very handsome and stylish bag. There are multiple ways to wear this bag and each way of wearing it demonstrate a different style, a unique style, no matter it's crossbody or it's on your shoulder or you double it up on your shoulder or you put one chain on this shoulder and the other chain on the other shoulder. You know, it's so many different ways and create so many different styles. And among all these different sizes of Nikki bag, I like the baby Nikki the most because it is the best size for someone to, to use this bag from dawn to dust. You know, you can wear it for work. It pretty much can fit in every single thing that you need to wear for your work. Just not a laptop, not an A4 paper. And it also is a good bag for you to go on evening events for dinner or drink. It won't be, a, it won't be too big. I think the normal Nikki size is a bit too big for an evening occasion. From YSL's official website, there are two sizes available for the Nikki bag. So the first one is a medium size and um, the second one is the baby Nikki that I was talking about. And of course, no bags on the YSL can escape the price increase game. So now the medium size bag price is at Hong Kong dollar 25,000 or US dollar 3,150. And the baby Nikki bag price is at Hong Kong dollar 22,900 
or USR 2850 and it can get more expensive if you choose a different leather. So the third bag that is on my watch list and I really recommend to you guys is just launched last year or in 2021. It's a very new bag. It's called La 587. So obviously there is a French pronunciation and I shall put it here. Le 5 à 7. So this bag is I don't think it's a typical YSL style. It's more of a YSL take on the recent, the very popular hobo bag style. And I have to say the design is very simple, but very beautiful. You look at the curve of this bag. I just adore it. And I want to put another bag here, which is from Ferragamo. And they look quite similar in terms of design, but both my friend and I, we had a discussion about it and both of us agree that the YSL bag looks much nicer than the Ferragamo one. I mean, of course, everyone has their own liking, so someone will like the Ferragamo one. But in my own opinion, the YSL one looks much more chic, much more nicely designed. And the Ferragamo one looks a bit older, looks a bit more just an older style. And along with the Manhattan bag, the 587, I think will take over the popular bag list of YSL for some years to come. I think this bag will gonna be popular for a few years at least. So this bag's price is, well, slightly cheaper than the Nikki bag and the Manhattan bag. The Hobo bag's price is at Hong Kong dollar 18,800 or US dollar 2,400. And um, YSL actually recently released another style of the same, the 5A7 line. It's called the Soft Small Hobo Bag. I put a picture here and it was on, I think, Rose's shoulder recently because she is the um, ambassador of the brand. And, uh, but the price is the same. This bag is bigger, uh, can fit in more things, but the price is the same compared to the regular La 587 bag. So that's it guys. I hope you liked today's video and I will definitely share with you guys an unboxing if I purchased any of these three bags. In the meantime, leave in the comments down below which one bag is your favorite from YSL. And I will see you very soon in my next video on skincare, fashion, luxury bags. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye.